Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for your grace over our lives. Thank you for the privilege to be called yours. Thank you for the grace to uh, listen to your word once again. We ask that more than ever before you speak to our hearts, we ask that you change our lives. Bless both the hearer and the speaker. In the name of Jesus, in the end, we shall glorify your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, glory to Jesus. Uh, it's been a wonderful series we've been going through. We've been talking about uh, the Word of God and uh, my teachings so far. If you miss any of the teachings, do well to go, go through them. We discuss things that if anyone listens to any of these teachings or all of these teachings, we know that your Bible study life, your world life would have been transformed. You will, uh, you will have learned how to lay hold on God's word and how to use it for your benefit. Uh, praise the Lord. So we continue in this series while we move on to the aspect of prayers. And by the grace of God, we have uh, about 10 teachings ahead. So get ready uh, to really, 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 really be blessed. And the things we'll be sharing by God's grace are not, they, they won't be theory. They are things that are practical to us. They are things that we have experienced, things that our hands have touched. So it won't be um, something far away. So uh, our teaching is not, uh, it's, it's, it's not just to pass knowledge. What we want to do is out of that which God has given to us, we want to share uh, with people and so that their lives will be touched. We are... We try to relate from where people are, as in, we are uh, related from where people are, to take them to where God wants them to be. So we show the things that we have gone through, how we dealt with these things practically, and how every other person can also benefit uh, from this. So we have no intention of being men of God. People know us on day to day, living know we are just like every other person, uh, and that we go to work, <laughs> we work several days a week. For me, I work seven days a week. And, uh, you know, having to live like that and still keep your heart focused on God to where you're able to minister and uh, uh, be close to God and fulfill destiny is what we want an average person, an average Christian should be able to possess. So, you don't have to be a full-time minister. My brother who is also speaking with us. Uh, at least I know he runs about two businesses and uh, still pastoring and yet still uh, learning and growing so these things are not so don't see it as something that is meant for uh men of god full-time pastors these are this is thing these are things that every christian should be able to practice praise the lord so today we'll be beginning the series on uh, prayer and today's topic if you have seen the flyer says teach us how to pray so it's practically a, an introduction to the lesson that will be taken uh, going forward. So this is like an introduction, but I am very sure it's going to bless your life because we're also going to deal with some things that are very, very, very crucial. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. So let's quickly read Luke chapter 11 from verse 1 to 13. That is where we got the, the topic. Luke chapter 11. From verse 1 to 13. Okay. So, the Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was praying, speaking of Jesus, in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Thank God for that disciple, <laughs> who said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he says, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. One thing we can see from this text is that there are patterns of prayer. There are ways of praying. Some of the disciples of Jesus are also disciples who were one disciples of John. So when they told him to teach them to pray, it, it, uh, it means that there was a certain way, there is a certain pattern 
that John taught his disciples. Um, some preachers have said, oh, he didn't say teach us how to pray, he said teach us to pray. <laughs> so, well, whatever it is they meant, but I strongly believe this, they asked him to teach them how to pray, not teach them to pray uh, per se. They the actually meant teach us how to pray because when he responded, he didn't say, okay, this is how you, this is, this is the way, this is, um, this is how to pray, in essence. He didn't try to make them pray. But he taught them the pattern of prayer. And he said, when you pray, uh, say that our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on, uh, in, as in heaven, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me some three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his, in his, in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my friends are with me in bed. My children are with me in bed, I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread from any of you that is a father, Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? And if he ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? For he ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, so they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. That's why they came to him. So one of the things we need to understand, the very first thing we must understand about prayer is that prayer needs to be learned. Prayer needs to be taught. Prayer needs to be learned. Prayer needs to be taught. The main pro problem with people praying is not really that uh, we need to be taught, but we need to be untaught the things we have learned. Many of us have carried a very, very poor understanding of prayers from our churches, from our movies that we watch, from all kinds of places. And when we teach, we are trying to undo those things that we have learned, which makes our prayers ineffective. So through this teaching, we are hoping that by God's grace, we will be able to help you to desire prayer. Number two, we hope that we help you to be able to pray and get results. That is what everybody wants. Everybody wants to pray and get results. They want to also ensure that when you pray, you have communion with God. You also want to ensure that when you pray, you pray with understanding. So that those are the four things we wish to achieve by this teaching. Praise the Lord. James said, you ask and you don't receive because you pray amiss. So there is a, there is a praying amiss that prevents uh prayers from getting answered of course uh, uh like i tell people uh appearing in the place of prayer is very important so whether you know how to pray or you don't know how to pray when you appear before god in prayer it's better than someone that does not appear at all so when you appear in god's prayer okay you know how to pray you don't know how to pray uh god is your father so when you go to your father's house whether you know how to talk to him properly or you don't know how to talk to him properly at least you came so <laughs> That's better than that. the child that stays over here and refuses to come home. So, when you come to God and you speak to God, whether you are speaking properly, some people speak to God and, you know, God feels bad out of the conversation. So, you, know, you feel like, oh, I wish he didn't come. I go, let him just stay. Let him stay far away and not come. You know, some people's prayer don't bless God. And I will talk about all of these things. And then, uh, so, so, appearing in the place of prayer is important. Okay? So, but more than appearing in God's prayer, we want to say the right things, we want to speak from the right heart. 
we want to ensure that our prayers are effective praise the lord hallelujah so i'm um, quickly i have a very different approach to prayer and uh, i don't know if there's any other person that teaches prayer from the points through which i teach it and uh, i'm going to do that also in this teaching when i'm speaking about prayer the first thing i want to do is to create a foundation for what you do when you pray and then um, usually i say that there are about five parties you address in prayer there are five parties you address in prayer i'm just going to do a, a an overcap of everything so the very first person you speak to in prayer and that is what most people know is that you speak to god in prayer that's number one when you are praying you speak to god and people do not understand that God is not the only party you speak to in prayer. That is why many people's prayers are not effective. It's okay to speak to God. As a matter of fact, speaking to God is the most important aspect of prayer. It is supposed to take the largest aspect of our prayers, but people need to learn how to speak to God properly. John chapter 11 verse 41 and 43 shows us this distinction very quickly. Jesus was at the tomb of Lazarus and uh, uh, let's read this very quickly. Uh, it's, it's, this is a teaching, so we should take time to read some of these things. You know, sometimes I just like to speak them off uh, and so that we can buy time. But let's read that place. So, verse 41, John 11. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus, now just is at the tomb of Lazarus. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said... So he lifted up his eyes, and what did he say? He said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. He's speaking to God. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Uh, I don't know. This is, this is a very powerful scripture. Maybe later on, I'm going to, going to, I'm going to talk about this in, in, in much more detail. Looking at the way Jesus spoke to God. You know, he was in public. So he said, Father, I hear you. I thank you because you hear me always. <laughs> You're not that speaking that. He didn't end it. He, said, he, he kept on communicating. He said, Father, you, you, you don't, don't feel surprised that I'm having to speak to you loudly like this. <laughs> he said, and I'm having to do this because of the people that are around, you know. He, he, was, he was speaking to God. So you speak to God. That's very important aspect of prayer. You don't shout on him. Many people they are very they are used to shouting on God as if he's deaf and he's not deaf. <laughs> Screaming to God as if he is out there, unreachable, untouchable. Meanwhile, God is in your heart. So you know we are used to when we are in church, they say shout at the top of your voice. You know. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about we are going to dwell more about speaking to God, but this is like an overcap. So it's important that you speak to God in prayer. Okay, so the second aspect, second person you speak to in prayer is your circumstances. Now if you look at that text, you will see that Jesus spoke to God. Then in verse 43, he said, And when he first had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. So you see, he first spoke to God. And why did he speak to God? Thanks. Father, thank you. Because you hear me always. He didn't go, Father, Lazarus must wake up. Hey, Father, you must wake Lazarus up. No. He just said, Father, I thank you because you hear me. And after speaking to his father, he didn't continue speaking to his father. He spoke to Lazarus. You see? He did what? He spoke to Lazarus. So this is a very powerful mystery of prayer. That most people do not know. They spend time talking to God about things they should not talk to God about. There are, you must know what to talk to God about. You must know what you must know what to tell things about your God. This thing is printed everywhere, but in our in, in our physical life, it is, it is immaterial. We don't bring it to play in our prayers. So over one single matter, Jesus addressed the Father 
then you go on and address the circumstances. So you speak to your circumstances, you speak to your mountain. Mark 11, 23, 24, the Bible says, um, um, uh, he said, he said, I have faith in God. He said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, but be cast into the sea, and shall now doubt in his heart that whatsoever he, he says shall come to pass, he said, he shall have whatsoever things he saith. The next verse says, Whatsoever you, you, uh, whatsoever you ask when you pray, say, believe that you have received it, and then you will have it. So the Bible is saying, Whosoever shall speak to this mountain. So you see, we want our mountains to move. Most times, everybody has a kind of mountain that they want to be moved. Majority of people, I won't generalize, some people don't have mountains to move. <laughs> so, most people have mountains to move in their lives, and they want this mountain to be moved. And the Bible says, Jesus speaking, he said, speaking about circumstances, speaking about mountains, you don't go to God talking to him about your mountain, you speak to your mountains. Okay, this is like an overcap. So I'm not going to dwell on these things. We are going to speak about, we are going to dwell more on these things in the subsequent teachings because we want your prayers to be different. We want your prayers to come with results. So you should not spend time speaking to your mountains because you are a man of authority. So you give, speak your word like you can see. Jesus spent, I don't know how many words, if I, if I have to count now, this is over 20 words, speaking to God. <laughs> But when it comes to Lazarus, just three words. Lazarus, come forth. Three words. You know, we need to understand this thing. Speaking to God must take the bulk of our prayer. By speaking to things, a little part. But most people focus more on praying about things and uh, just talking to God about things, talking to God about things, and they don't do what the Bible says, speak to your things, speak to your circumstances. Okay, so the third personality you speak to in prayer, they are demonic spirits. So people need to know this. You don't pray to demons. So don't please don't misunderstand me. You don't pray to circumstances. Because the word pray means a lot of things. It means to ask. It means also means to demand. So you can ask. You can also demand. So you can ask the Father. But you can demand of things what you want. Okay. So you, 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 you speak to demonic spirit. There are times when you need to speak to demonic spirits in prayers. Okay. And when you are speaking to demonic spirits, you can bind them. You can... Uh, cast them out, you can rebook them, you can say, hey, Mr. Man, get out of this place. You know, that's, that's how to rebook the devil. <laughs> you know, we are not talking about that today, but it's just important I mention it. Uh, when the Bible says, uh, rebook the devil and he will flee from you, people go, Satan, I rebook you. No, that's not what the Bible says. When they say rebook a child, you go, child, I rebook you. No, no. <laughs> when they say, uh, um, the Bible says, when your neighbor does wrong, rebook him. Abby? Then you say, when your neighbor does wrong, you say, hey, so you see somebody probably um, probably doing something wrong, probably lying, and say, hey, bro, 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 brother Titus, I rebook you. <laughs> That's not what the Bible says. So the Bible says we book that we actually says uh, correct him. When you see him misbehaving, correct him. When, correct him means set him straight. So when you see Satan oppressing you, you see the work of the devil in your life, you don't go to say, Satan, I rebook you. You know, you, hey, get out of this place. You know, Somebody giving a rebook is somebody who is you are you, you can only Bible says rebook not an, el, uh, 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 an elder but entreat him as a father. So people go to entreating the devil instead of rebooking him. <laughs> so you know, Bible says rebook the devil. So you you entreat somebody who is older than you, but when you are talking to someone that is lower than you, you rebook them. So when you rebook people, you are standing at a place of authority before you can administer a rebook. So when you are rebooking the devil, you say, get out of this place. Hey, get out, be gone. Pack your load and get out. You have no right stepping on God's property. You have no right oppressing God's people. You rebook him, you set him straight. You tell him, hey, stop that rubbish and get out. Praise the Lord. So that's how to deal with the devil in prayers. And, and sometimes you need to scream. I, I won't dispute that. You need to scream when you are speaking to the devil. You know? But if you know you're sometimes it's not you don't have to scream every time. No, but sometimes you know if you are angry, truly angry. The Bible says, "Be angry." You know, don't let the sun uh, set on your anger. He said, "Rebook that and he flee from you." So receive that and he flee from you. So sometimes you need that kind of anger to use for, on the devil. And because some people don't know how to get angry with the devil, they go around getting angry with people and the devil that is sitting on their life. They can't get angry with him. I'm not talking about Satan today. Some other time we may who knows 
in the prayer series, we may, we may be privileged to also talk about how to deal with demonic powers. Believers need to know this thing. You need to know that Satan has no authority over your life and know how to set him straight. Praise the Lord. So, in prayer, there are times when you revoke demonic spirits. People spend days praying about demonic activities. These things are wrong. You know, this, these things are wrong. The devil is, uh, has been defeated. So, when you see his activity on your life, all you need to do is to give you a command and believe that whatsoever things you speak to the devil, because the Bible says it, it's going to be like that. That is why we spend time talking about, um, um, that's why we spend time talking about le- uh, reading God's word. And uh, so that when you read God's word and you are empowered, then you know how to address demonic powers appropriately. Probably you see some demonic patterns in your life. I remember years ago, I, I, I just noticed my properties were getting missing. Okay, I, 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 I gave my phone to a lady friend. She kept the phone in her room and they came to her room and they picked that phone from the window. Probably a week after, uh, I, 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 I lent someone else my camera, a very new camera. Oh my God, that camera was mine. It's still, it's still paying me. Very sweet camera, many years ago, 13 uh, megapixel. That was in 2012. The phones were not with 2 megapixel back then. <laughs> so, I had this camera, 30 megapixel, very sharp, Sony, powerful camera. And I just lent somebody, and she traveled with it, and on the road, she was robbed, and uh, they took the camera. <laughs> Probably a week after, they st- stole my laptop. So, I noticed that demonic pattern, and what did I do? I put an end to it. And it, I think it was several years after. That I look back and I saw that nothing in my life has been stolen or missing. I think that same week, my pa, my I think my then we were using USB, um, this um, uh, I've forgotten this thing you plug to your modem. We we're using modem back then. I also had the modem that got spoiled. You know, things are either getting spoiled or they get stolen. So I, I noticed that is a demonic activity, and I put an end to it. And several years after, I noticed nothing. None of my body gets stolen or gets spoiled. Years after that time. Praise the Lord. So, you can put an end to demonic activity. You just need to understand your place of authority and put an end to it. You have no, you have no, uh, you, you should not be spending time, hours on the mountain, praying about all kinds of demonic activities and demonic problems and generational crosses. So, you put spend time in prayers. Instead of them to spend this time with God, they spend this time with demons. And eventually, you see demonic activities in their lives. People like that, they always have a demon to deal with. Always have a demon because they have become demon conscious instead of God conscious. So they claim their prayer. Of course, they mention the name of Jesus, but they are too demon conscious. So demons have a lot of activities in their lives because that is what they are conscious of. So sometimes you need to scream at the devil, send him out, cast him out, stop his activity, stop his uh, cast, uh, send out demons of sickness and uh, uh, diseases and all. And... Uh, that is that is necessary. I'm going to argue because of time. Number four, you speak to yourself in prayer. That's also correct. You, you can also speak to yourself in prayers. You can speak to yourself what you want for your life. I am the righteous, righteousness of God. I am a child of God. I'm a child of destiny. I will fulfill my destiny no matter what the devil says. No matter what the flesh thinks. I'm going to reach my goal. I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I cannot die before my time because God's angels are protecting me. Since when did God die? Why would something bad happen to me? God has spoken in his word. He said, they shall give his angels charge over me. They shall bear me in their hands. They they shall bear me in their hand and shall not allow my foot to be dashed against the stone. He says, thousands shall fall on my right and tens of thousands on my left and none shall come near me because I am the earth heritage of the Lord. You know, you are speaking to yourself in prayers. You are decreeing upon your life what you want. That is prayer. You are not speaking to God. You are releasing utterances. You are releasing words upon your own life. You are decreeing upon your own life. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. So you see, um, you see these, um, these um, songs that we sing. You know, we have very beautiful songs. That says something beautiful about you. And I quickly need to mention that uh, uh, songs, you know, people, people see songs as, people see songs as um, what you sing when you want to praise God. But that is not necessarily true. 
songs are words with melody that's all they are songs with melody so a song can be a song of request it can be a song of praise it can be even a song of praying for yourself it can be a song of praying for someone else it can be a song of praying for your nation so songs are in essence are also a form of prayer just that this time melodies are added to the song that is why you must be careful the songs you sing and ensure that you are actually saying the things the songs are saying so when the song says uh, uh, i am a chosen generation we are a chosen generation called for to show this excellence you know that is a song of prayer but that prayer you are speaking over your own life you are not speaking to god who are you speaking to speaking over your own life so side by side by that um is um speaking to other people so like jesus at the tomb of lazarus is also spoke to lazarus so you can speak over people you can speak over your children you can speak over your uh your future you can speak over your wife you can speak over your parents in the name of jesus my my dad will not die without giving his life to jesus you i speak to you father i possess you in the mighty name of jesus you will not die until you have accepted jesus i decree that people begin to come around you and that will lead you to christ i begin to decree that circumstances around you cooperate you know you begin to speak and speak and speak to people and speak over your child you will excel you will not be small you'll be great the lord causes face to shine upon you the lord bless you the lord keep you you speak over people you pray. now in all of these things you are not speaking to god can you see you are speaking to things Praise the Lord. So quickly, I'm going to dwell more on talking to God the next uh, few minutes. And I'm going to mention quickly seven things. By God's grace, I pray we'll be able to finish. If you can't finish God's grace, we'll take it up from there next week. But I would like to finish so that we can uh, wrap this up very quickly. I have just I have about 30 minutes to go. Glory to Jesus. Matthew chapter 6. So I'm going to dwell more about speaking to God and the dynamics there is to it. Matthew chapter 6. From verse 5 to 13. This is where Jesus is instructing us on how to um, speak to God. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 5. He says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogue and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret. And thy father, which is yet in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition as the Edens do. For they think they shall be, they shall be heard, for they are much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have. I have need of before ye ask him. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to stop there. So quickly, I'll mention seven things that we need to take note. While we are talking to God, number one is to understand that hypocrites, they love to pray. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, for, it says, when, it says thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, because they love to pray. So, uh, like I said earlier, it's important to appear in the place of prayer. But you know, what is much more important in prayer than your appearing is your heart. Hypocrites, they love to pray, but their purpose for wanting to pray is just for showmanship. So, their prayers is completely abominable to Jesus, abominable to God. So, that somebody likes to pray, ah, that brother, he likes to pray, ah, I love the way that brother used to kabosh. <laughs> You have no right to judge him anyway. You, you, you don't know people's hearts. But you see, uh, praying is more than uh, 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 loving to pray. Your heart must be right with God in prayer. It must not be something you do for sure. There are people I know who, can, when they are in church, they pray very well, very loud. Right? But when at home, no prayer. When they are in church, they can they are the one that we dance most in church. Ah, you say, hey, hey, this one is very grateful. But in their own prayer place, they don't dance. So some of those dances are not even, they are not really to God. They are sometimes to, to, to just do exercise and feel the song, you know, like you dance in a party, you know. 
The song is sweet, you also dance. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So when you are at home, you can clap your hands and dance to God. You know, no, no music, no nothing. I'll probably just thank God for multimedia today. You can put uh, two earphones in your ears and you just dance before your maker. And that will be prayer. So prayer must not be something you do for sure. Number one. Then secondly, pray. The other side to it is also that uh, loving to pray does not mean your prayer is being effective. Say, ah, I like praying, I like praying. Okay, it's okay to like praying, but liking prayer does not mean you are doing it effectively. It does not mean you are doing it rightly. So it's important you know that when it comes to talking to God and praying, uh, just loving to do it or doing it is not what is more important, but doing it very correctly. The second thing Jesus mentioned very emphatically and something that I don't understand how that people do not see these things in their Bible is number two I call vain repetition. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. You know, I don't know how we missed this. I don't know when or how we missed it. But somewhere along the line, uh, people started praying like uh, like the Eden. They start praying like unbelievers. They start praying like Muslims. You know, a, a Muslim will all these uh, uh, what's, what's this? I don't know. I've forgotten the name of this thing now. Hold it. This they are rostry like kind of thing. I'm going to say lie, 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 and they, and they can go, keep on saying that for as long as possible. Glory to Jesus. So I don't know. We borrowed this thing from the hidden or something. But because I, when I checked through the Bible, it was never like that. You know, you see people praying and they go, uh, call the name of Jesus seven times, okay? Well, Jesus is not there. I don't know why we, we usually do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, call fire seven times, well, whatever. Whatever that is going to do. Then we go, okay, now pray and say, Father... Turn my sorrow into joy. Then a Christian go, Father, turn my sorrow into joy. Turn my sorrow into joy. Turn, ah, Father, <laughs> turn my sorrow into joy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, and it goes on and on like that. As if you are speaking to a God that is deaf. You are speaking to a God that is not intellectual. Speaking, you are speaking to a deity. You are speaking to your Father. You are speaking to a person that creates worlds. Someone that listens, someone that hears, someone that responds. How would you feel going to your father? And you go, and you probably, I don't know, probably you had a father and probably, I don't know who's listening, but you want to get something from him, probably like a school fees. And that is, you say, daddy, daddy says yes. And you say, daddy, you say, yes, I'm listening. Daddy, yes, ah! Give me, give me my school fees. Give me my school fees. <laughs> daddy, give me my school fees. <laughs> hey, daddy. I'm sure if your if your father is like my daddy, he will probably flog you, <laughs> flog you out of that place because he will think you are mad. We speak to God as if he's not listening. Somehow we are not being truthful with ourselves. We do not actually believe that God is listening to our prayers. Because if you think that God is really listening to you, then you will speak to him. And not be embarrassing him with your repetitive prayers. Praise the Lord. He says, don't use vain repetitions as the Hebrews do. For they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. Excuse me, when you tell, they say, they, they ask you to pray. You say, Father, you say, Father, turn my sorrow into joy. Okay, if that is a prayer you want to pray, well, you are free to pray it. But then we say, Father, turn my sorrow into joy. He has heard you. He is not deaf. You don't have to repeat it again and again. You are not speaking to a deaf God. So if we now go, ah, Father, turn my throat to joy. Turn my throat to joy. Turn my throat to joy. They are not speaking in tongues, so. But, you know, they have said the word too fast and they are already saying rubbish. Ah, you know, I don't know. You are talking to God. He is a, he is a real personality. It's not a deity. All of those do not do anything except they are religious rubbish. Praise the Lord. So when you speak to God, you speak to Him as if He's listening. Glory to Jesus. The only time when you are permitted to repeat words in prayer is probably if you are creating reading. 
creating songs, you know, you are creating, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are doing a work of heart. And that comes to play only probably when you are praising God. And that will be because you are trying to put together a work of art. You can go hallelujah, hallelujah, as many times as possible because you are creating a work of heart. It's, 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 it is the rhythm is what, uh, is where the, is, is, you are creating beauty through the rhythm. That's the only time when repeating words will be reasonable. That will be, uh, that will be like a poem, like a rhythm, like a song. That is allowed in singing. But not when you are speaking to God, when you are asking God for something. If you don't go repeating words over and over again, that is not correct. If you read John chapter 17, you will see the way Jesus prayed. Let me see. Time is far again, so I'll have love to read that John 17. Please do well to go and read it. If your prayers cannot be documented, then you are praying uh, very repetition. Except you are praying in tongues. People's prayers in the Bible were documented. Jesus' prayer was documented. A whole chapter, he was praying. He was being explicit. He was, he was, he was, he was, he was clarifying the things he's saying. See the way he prayed in John, in, in that, uh, in John 11 at the tomb of Lazarus. You see, the, you see what he did? He didn't, he didn't expect God to assume that he, that God knows why he's speaking to him. He, he, he spoke to him, uh, he spoke to him like an articulate being. That is how to speak to God. You don't just go screaming and shouting on the on, on top of God's head as if as if is I don't know I don't know what we think he is. People just go shouting Jesus Jesus Jesus. Except you are in pain, of course. <laughs> Glory to God. If you are in pain, don't worry. You are allowed to shout the name of God. Jesus also shouted the name of God two times when he was in pain. So if you are in pain, you are permitted to scream the name of God, no problem. But if you are not in pain. Please, when you call him once, he has heard you. Say, Father, you will say, yes, my son. Then tell him what is on your mind. And just speak to him. Can I tell the story of how he went to visit somebody at home? And uh, it was eventually, later on, they came to uh, tell him about the story. And you know, he, was, he, he came to visit and then he, he, he stayed in their room. They locked the door. He was there. And they came to his door and saw him talking. These are around the days of, of phones, of mobile phones. So you, when, today, if you see somebody talking alone, you may think that, okay, probably um, probably they are speaking to somebody on phone. Probably there's an earphone in their ear. Or probably there's a chip in their brain or something, you know. But he came to visit. There's no phone in the room. There was no mobile phone. And they just heard him talking. And they went close to his door. They heard him talking. You wait as if the person is replying, then he will talk again. You wait for a reply, then talk again. Then the man was confused. The man went down and told his wife, I don't know. Is there anybody in that room with, with uh, Brohadin? He said, Yeah, no. So he, he, he seems to be speaking to somebody. So eventually they had to open the door to be sure all this way. They said they, said they saw him sit on the floor and he was having what they call fellowship with God, speaking to God. I don't know. I don't know plan with my to speak more about this. There is nothing more beautiful than speaking to God. I tell you, that is the, 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 the best aspect of prayer. Speaking to God in understanding. Just speaking English. Just talking to Him. And when you are done talking to Him, you have nothing more to say. And you still want to spend more time with Him. There is something to do. The Bible tells us what to do. Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, For we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit taketh hold with us and pray together with us with prayers, with words which cannot be uttered. Say, so He alone knows the mind of God and He searches the heart of God, yea, the deep things of God. So, when you, are, when you are done talking to God and you don't know what else to pray, but you feel, ah, my, in my heart, I still want to spend some more time talking to God, then you pray in tongues. So you are either speaking words articulately to your father or you are speaking with tongues. There is no place for repeating words. There is no place for la, 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 la. No, there is no place for that. There is no place for, ah, father, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Ah, father, do it. Do it. Hey. Then you, you, you come out of that prayer meeting like you, you feel like you have prayed. Excuse me. That's a religious feeling. I've seen people come to meetings and they'll be like, they don't used to pray in these meetings. Ah. Somebody just go and not feel like they have prayed. These are just religion. You know, 
If they have not yet sweat and they ah, they don't feel their pain. And there's a place for sweating, okay? There's a place for vibrating and jumping and screaming. All those things have their place. But I'm telling you the simple act of speaking to God. Talk to Him about everything. Talk to Him about your life. Talk to Him about, you know, when I was uh, just getting married to Christ, something around like that, 2012 or 2013 or so, I remember I told God the, all the story of my life. You know, just, for, just spending time. I was telling Him. I did not assume that he knows. I will go to God's prayer and I will be telling you the story of my life. You know, you must get used to speaking with God. If you read Solomon's prayer was recorded, was documented, can your prayers be documented? If somebody records your prayers <laughs> after one hour of praying, if somebody records what you have said, can it be documented? Then if it cannot be written out, probably you record it and then they transcribe it then you're probably engaging in vain repetition, except that you're praying in tongues, of course. So you see that in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to 42. That's the prayer of Solomon, documented. 2 Corinthians 20, verse 1 to 34, that's the prayer of Joseph Hattis, was documented also. Exodus 32, 11 to 14, that's the prayer of Moses, also documented. So you see, the old, the old book of Psalms is filled with the prayers of Moses. Moses, uh, of David, I mean, praying over and over and over again. Glory to Jesus. You see another prayer of Moses, 2 Samuel 7, verse 18 to 29. These are documented prayers. You know why? Because they were speaking to God. I, I think it was during the Roman Catholic age when paganism and Christianity got me that we got into uh, very repetition. Where uh, we, uh, we, we, people start holding their rosary also and say, Hail Mary, full of it, the Lord is the blessed of God, and bless the fruit of whom Jesus. Hail Mary, full of it, the Lord is with thee, bless the among men, and bless the fruit of whom Jesus. Hail Mary, full of it, the Lord is with thee. You know, I think that's where we got that from because I, do, I, I can't see it in history where people prayed like that. So we must learn when we are talking to God, please talk to Him like He's listening and He is listening. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. So sometimes probably take a chair, sit down in your room, put a chair in front of you and say, Father, take your seat. Then talk. Then talk to him like he's listening. And I tell you, this will bless your life like never before. Several times when I imagine God just sitting by my side and, we, and just listening and just responding, it blesses your heart. You feel like you have touched the heart of God himself. He responds. When you know he's listening, you can even give room for him to respond. But when you are talking to him like uh, he's, he's a deity, he's a god, a, a deity you have to you have to you have to do all these gimmicks for so that they can listen to you, then you are missing out. Glory to Jesus. Time God willing, we talk more about this. But that's the fundamental. Learn to talk to God. Just talk. Just talk to him. Number two, number three now is uh personally God should not be repeated. That's a, this is another thing. Um, Smith will go short. Though it may seem a little extreme, but he said, he said, if you ask God for something seven times, then you have doubted six times. Because, okay, so I came to my father and I said, Daddy, um, we have not paid, uh, you have not, I need, I need my school fees. Okay, and, and if my daddy has, he will say, okay, no problem, I'll give you. Get it tomorrow, you know. If he has, he'll give me. And Jesus said, God has. And he's always willing to give. So when I ask him, he wants to give. So if by tomorrow I have not seen the school fees, I'm not going to go back to daddy and say, daddy, I have not been asked. I'm going to speak to him. Even if I'm going to speak to him about the school fees matter, it's going to be in reference to what I have spoken yesterday. I'm going to say, daddy, yesterday I told you uh, about my school fees. And daddy will say, oh, I've sent it to the school already. Just go and tell your principal. They will allow you in. I've, I've paid it already. You know? So you see, but people go to God and say, God, I need my school fees. Then the next day say, God, I need my school fees. Then the next day say, God, I need my school fees. As if there is no feedback, as if there is nothing, as if God is just not listening or not doing anything. So there's a place of persistence in prayer by the grace of God we talk about it. There's a place of patience in prayer by God we talk about it. But repeating same words to God in prayer uh, does not mean, it does not how to be persistent in prayers. Glory to Jesus. Luke chapter 18, verse um, 1 to 8. Jesus talked about the unjust judge. And I would not like to dwell so much on that because of our, of our time. Uh, but people always refer God to that unjust judge. 
you know, and this is an unjust judge we are talking about. I needed the opportunity to listen. But God is not an unjust God. God is a good God. Glory to Jesus. So, we build on all these matters later on. This is like an introduction. Glory to God. Okay. Um, number four, begging God is not allowed. This is another thing that people do religiously. <laughs> Show me one place in your Bible where Christians need to beg God. It's not correct. It makes God look bad. I need to understand this. Take, for example, as a father. Because, you know, one thing Jesus seemed to show us is that God is our father. And seeing God as your father, you know, truly changes the scope of your relationship with him completely. Take, for example, you went to visit the father at home. And while you are sitting beside him, then his son came and started crying. And said, Daddy. He said, What? Daddy. He said, What? Ah, talk. What is on your mind now? See, Daddy, what, what, what's on your mind? What do you need, Daddy? Please, for God's sake. I just need 20 naira. If you are sitting, first thing that will come to mind is this father must be a very stingy father. And if you are the father, you are going to feel extremely bad in front of your friends. So you mean you are crying? You mean you are begging me for 20 naira? <laughs> you know, you'll be shocked because you have. They are going to think you are very wicked. That you have, you are, in fact, something is must be a very, a very evil father. Glory to Jesus. So you see, when we beg God for something, we make Him look bad. There is no scripture in the Bible that asks us to beg God for anything. Not for mercy, not for anything. No way in the New Testament. If you read the New Testament, I preached a measurement uh, years ago about um, about mercy, and I established through several scriptures. Where the Bible never asks us to plead or beg for mercy. The Bible says, come, obtain mercy. That's what the Bible says. Obtain mercy. Mercy is the children's bread. It's already available in the house. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it says, uh, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace and mercy, to find grace for help, to obtain mercy, uh, find grace for help in times of need. So you see, uh, Paul would repeatedly say, we have obtained mercy. We have received mercy. Come and obtain mercy. So you obtain what is already given. You don't beg for it. So when you do something wrong, you, you, you speak to your father and say, Father, I'm sorry. And you say, okay, no problem. The Bible says, for you remember what we are about flesh. Praise the Lord. So you don't beg God for anything, not for mercy, not for things. The Bible says, ask. Matthew 7, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek, you shall find. Ask. It says, to everyone that asks, it, receive it. Ask, not beg. Listen. Begging is from a concept that says, what I am asking from you, you don't want to give me. Are you getting this? You only have to beg somebody. Now, there's a place for courtesy. I can say, can you please give me a cup of water? That's courtesy. That please there is not begging. Okay? But when I say please, for God's sake, please, 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 just one cup of water, please. Please, I don't, please, I just want a cup of water. Ah, please, give me one cup of water. That's begging. That's not asking. So, begging comes first of all from a state of unbelief. So, when you beg God for something, you are already operating in lack of faith. God's grace will talk more about faith and prayer. So, when you, are, when you come begging God, it means you are already telling yourself, God is not indebted to providing my needs. God does not have the responsibility of taking care of my needs. So, I, God does not want to take care of my needs. So, I have to beg Him so He can do it. I am not his child. I am not his responsibility. Being a father means that you are, you are responsible for taking care of your children. So they don't have to beg you for anything. If you have to beg God for something, it means he did not want to give you. And if God doesn't want to give you something, then don't ask him for it. Please, don't ask him. I you are getting my point. Okay, I'm going to repeat it. We should not beg God for anything. We only need to ask and before and before we ask, we know he wants to give us. So it's like so it's like the person, the the the, 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 the giver and the asker come to meet. So God is has already given. All you need to do is to ask and receive an, an access. So if there is now something God does not want to give you, then please I beg in the name of God, don't ask. 
Because if you push God to give you what you want to give you, it means that thing is not good for you and it may destroy you. So begging has no place at all. Glory to God in dealing with God. You can plead as courtesy, you know, just be nice. Father, can you please send your angels to watch over my son? Keep him and protect him. Thank you because I know you will do it because you're a good father. And anything we ask you, you're going to do it. Good God, you know, that's how you talk to God. Don't go begging, God, please. Ah, just one bit. I just want to please for only one thing. No. The Bible says in John chapter. Uh, where's, where's it now? Let me see that scripture. Okay, we're going to get there. I'm already talking about that already. That's number six. The Father loves you. Okay. So you should not beg God for things. Just ask Him and He will give you. If you have to beg God for something, then He does not want to give you. And if God does not want to give you something, then don't ask Him. If God has set a time for you to get something, for example, God's grace will talk about all these things, the place of patience and prayer. Because people say, uh, when you ask God for something, God has three responses. He either says yes or no, or uh, what's the other thing? Or wait, or be patient. You know, all these things are not scriptural. I read a book by Kenneth Hagin uh, some days ago, The Name of Jesus. And the first thing he said in the introduction, that's what he said in the introduction. And he said, he made a very bold statement. He said, there is nothing he has ever asked God for himself or for his family that God did not do. That's the kind of people you follow. That's the kind of people you try to listen to. That's the kind of people you want to hear from. Not people who tell you that God has three responses. Either a yes or a no or wait a little. This is not scriptural. The Bible says, if we ask anything according to his will, he will give us. That's what the Bible says. So you are either not asking according to his will or you are asking according to his will and you are getting the things you are asking. His will has to do with timing. His will has to do with everything. So you must, you will know when to ask. You will know what to ask and you get what you need. Glory to Jesus. That's how to ask. So I, I, I've talked about that. Let me just go because of time. Number five, <clears throat> people also think that eulogizing God makes, he, makes his head swell and making him attend to us. These things are not scriptural. They are not scriptural. This, 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 uh, this is uh, a misunderstanding. People think that, okay, if I, if I pray, yeah, uh, if when prayer works, try praises. Well, you know, God's grace will talk about prayers and prayers, faith and thanksgiving. Then we'll be able to deal more on this matter. Uh, it's not it's not correct to think that if I ask God for something, God is up there folding his hands and saying, No, I will not give him. And you're asking, God, give me, you are begging him, say, No, I will not give him. God just is looking at you. You know, when we are in school, we act all this drama, and in those dramas, you know, there'll be somebody playing God. And then people will come in to ask him things, he will not answer, he will just be squeezing his face. Then this young lady will just come and be saying, Ah, you are the great, you are greater than the greatest, you are mightier than the mightiest, you are the almighty, you are Oba, Oba, you are Gratin, blah, blah, blah. Then the person playing will not stand up and be smiling and be laughing. I take, I quickly take what you're done is and hand it over to the person, you know. God is not like that, sir. You know, we need to get some, some of these pictures out of our minds. God is not like that. And that leads me to, you to number six. The Father loves you. John chapter 16 verse 27. Jesus said, the Father is your Father. He loves you. He wants to give to you. Don't approach him as if he is, uh, he is a deity. I have a son. And when he asks things from me, he does not come with me whimpering like a dog and begging and pleading and repeating words over and over again. I'm, 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 still, I'm just a human being. Children have authority. Children are bold to ask him from their father because they know that their father has a responsibility to take care of them. You have a father. This father loves you. This father cares about you. You need to know this. When Paul and Silas were praising God in the, in the tomb, they were not expecting that God's power would respond like that. We talk about the power of praises and all, and, uh, and, and thanksgiving and all these things uh, later on. But can you understand that uh, when prayer fails, try, try praises. These things are not scriptural. It's not scriptural. It's, you, it's, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says when you need something from God, ask Him. Yes, thank Him for it. Because thanks as a way of boosting your faith. Thanks, your thanks does not boost God responding. It boosts your faith to receive from God. And God's grace, in the course of the teaching, we we'll talk more about this. Number seven and the last, prayer is primarily a friendship between God and man. And we need to understand this. God 
must you must make friends with god through your prayer that is the purpose of prayer that is what you do in prayer prayer is relationship prayer is communion with god prayer is fellowship with god prayer is standing with god like i said all of these other forms of prayers they are things you do on the side but centrally majorly uh, what you need to do in your prayer is to commune with god god will be the shoulder you cry on when you are in pain it should be god you think about first when you are happy, it should be God you think about first. That is what it means to have a friend. Someone you want to, you can't wait to gist them what is going on in your life. You saw a movie, you like the movie, you should talk to God about it. Something wrong happened, you should talk to God about it. Something nice happened, you talk to God about it. Luke chapter 10 verse 21, the Bible says, And God rejoiced. Jesus heard some news and he was so happy. What's the next thing? He spoke to his father. <laughs> and when he was in extreme pain, what did he do? He spoke to his father. That's how God must be to you. You must be that very close friend that you want to share things with as they are happening. Come out to toilet to later on at night or in the morning. You spend time to gist him about what has gone on. You speak to him. It's a song I love so much. It says, Sweet heart of prayer. Sweet heart of prayer. Sweet heart of prayer. That calls me from a world of care. And beats me. What does it say again? And bids me to my father's throne, make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's name by thy return. Sweet hour of prayer. It's a song I love so much. Anytime I sing that song, I just want to talk to God. Prayer is a sweet place you want to be. Spending time with God is a sweet place. One of the reasons why we don't enjoy our time in prayer is because our prayer is too religious. We don't feel we are actually spending some time with God that is real, that is waiting to listen. One of the things that connects most with God is faith. And one of the things that expresses our faith in God is prayer. We need to understand this. We need to understand this very importantly. When you die and go to be with God, you are not sure we still continue to use faith to speak with God. But while we are here on earth, because faith is what pleases God, when you speak to God and you believe He is listening, this blesses God. This makes God happy. This pleases the heart of God. So you, you, can, you will have only that privilege when you are on earth. This is why God enjoys the company of men and the company of angels. Because angels, they have to deal with the God that they are seeing. But the Bible says, blessed is he who sees not, but yet believes. So God is happy when you cannot see him, you cannot touch him, but you know he is there, you know that he is present, you are spending time with him, you are speaking to him, you believe he is listening, you believe he is responding, you may not even hear nothing, but you believe he is listening, you believe he is responding. This blesses the heart of God. God is blessed. God is being ministered to when we pray, when we speak to him. He enjoys our company than the company of the innumerable countless number of angels in heaven. When a son says, Father, the Father is there. He enjoys that company. He will not trade that company for a me. He will trade it in a second for the company of a million angels. That's what the songwriter says. That's him song. It says, This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting price. And shout when passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. When you go to be with Jesus, sweet hour of prayer is gone. No more praying to God by faith. You will be speaking to Him physically, and God will miss that. So, will you spend time with God tonight and pray and talk to your Father? Don't, don't, don't pray if, I, if, if that is a good word to use. Don't pray tonight. Just talk to your father. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Create him and talk to him. Say, Father, I love you. I want to be in your presence. I love, I want to, teach me to be where you are. Teach me to enjoy your presence. What this young man is talking about today, help me to, 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 to access it. The sweetness of your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just want to be where you are. Do 
dwelling in your presence feasting at your table oh surrounded by your glory in your presence oh that's where I always want to be I just want to be I just want to be with you I just want to be with you I just want to be I just want to be with you God is longing for us to seek him I just want to be with you. God is calling you today to come to His presence. I just want to be with you. God is saying, stop that religion. Talk to me. I'm your father. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. We need to end so that we can close. Because we can, if you go on like that, we may continue to pray on and on and we may not stop. By God's grace, create time to spend time with God, talk to Him, and this will really, really bless your heart. I pray as you do, you will enjoy the sweetness of God's presence. I tell you, there is power in that place. There is peace in that place. There is nothing I take to that place that is not soft. I tell you over and over and over again. There is nothing, there is no burden I carry to that place of talking to God. Not screaming and shouting and saying, move the mountain. Just talking to God about it. Everything, it just, just calms down. The advice is coming. The way forward comes in. The peace comes in. Even sometimes the mountain is still there, but the peace is there. You are confident that it's in the Father's hands now. You can cast your cares upon Him because you know He cares for you. Thank you, Father. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your children who have heard your word. Let this fire be brought in their heart to begin to spend time with you. As we continue in this series, um, bless our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Have a great night. Hallelujah! We believe you have been blessed by this wonderful teaching. Other SGS teachings are available on our YouTube channel. Kindly do well to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification icon in order to receive updates about our SGS teachings. You can also drop your comments and questions after the broadcast. We also have the compressed audio version of this teaching and other teachings on our Telegram platform. Join us again next week for another round of Encounter with God. Remain blessed. Shalom.